Welcome to my sewing room. We have such an exciting and wonderful show for you today. The theme of the show today is the baby show. And a little bit later, I have a very special guest, my very dear friend and business colleague, Kathy McMakin. Kathy is Executive Vice President of Martha Pulling Company. Now, let me share with you some adorable things that you can make for your baby. This little serger diaper bag is absolutely precious. It has a little pocket on the front to put bottles or whatever. And when you just want a little diaper bag to carry, this is a great size. You know, as summer rolls around, is there anything any sweeter than little diaper shirts and diaper pants to go on a baby? Nice and cool when you make these out of 100% cotton. Sweet little summer baby day gown with wonderful serger tucks on the front, pretty Swiss embroidery and lots of serger trim. Another pretty little serger gown. This time, as we've traveled around the country, a lot of the people have made this and used it for a christening dress or for a baby dedication dress. This is so pretty with the little puff sleeves. Again, all made on the serger. Another one of these cool, cool, this uh, little day, uh, day shirts, little diaper shirts and, and diaper covers, so precious and so cool for the summer months for a new baby. And you know something, if you wanna make just a fabulous gift that is easy, easy, easy and does not cost very much, as far as time or ingredients to go in this gift, there is nothing any sweeter than an elegant baby bib. This one has Swiss insertion down the front, but a lot of people that are so fortunate as to own a, an embroidery machine go ahead and just put a really sweet little embroidery on the front. Here is one more little bib. This one's very tailored, almost like a tuxedo front shirt. This one is very tailored, a little bib for a little boy. All of these things I've shared with you this morning have been made on the serger. And now, won't you come over to the technique boards and let's see just how easy, super easy it is to do French sewing by serger. French sewing by serger is so much fun. It's so easy and it's so fast. Just watch. Now, if you want to attach lace to the edge, in this case, we have a piece of beautiful embroidery. You simply put the fabric and the lace right sides to right sides, leaving about a quarter to an eighth, about a quarter of an inch exposed. Then you simply use the rolled hem, surge it down, and then look how pretty it is after you've attached the lace to the insertion. Now the same thing can be done when you put gathered lace edging. You simply pull the string and the, and the lace, the gathering thread and the lace, lay it over here by the seam allowance on your faggoting, and simply stitch it along on the serger, open it up, and look how pretty it is to have gathered lace stitched to the faggoting using the serger. Now there is another trick that I really love on the serger too, French sewing by serger. These are serger tucks, and you can see how pretty it is with the edging attached. Now exactly how do you do this? Well, I have invited as my guest today my very close friend and business colleague, Kathy McMakin. Kathy, welcome to the show. Thank you so <laughs> much, Martha. Today we want to share with everyone how easy it is to do heirloom sewing by serger. It is so fast. But the first thing you have to do is you have to look at your serger to figure out where your needle sews. So that's the most important thing. The easiest way to do that is to take a piece of fabric just a scrap would be just fine. Take a piece of fabric and a ruler, and I usually double my fabric because we are usually sewing two things together so it gives you that same amount of thickness. And you just take a fabric marker or a pencil or anything you have and just draw a line. And you don't even really have to use a ruler unless you want to. Now what we're going to do to find out where our needle sews is we're going to take this line and we're going to look at our foot and we're going to decide if your foot has a needle mark on it where your needle sews, you know, then um, you'll be able to take that line, place it underneath the mark on your foot, and then when you press your gas pedal, 
it will take it through your serger and it will actually sew on that line. So that will tell you if that mark on your foot is true to where your needle sews. Then you can adjust yourself either one way or the other. So what we're going to do is we'll take this line. Now in this particular serger we have several marks on the front of our foot. Um, but this serger does have a needle mark for our serger when it's set up on three thread rolled hem. And that's the stitch that you'll need to use for heirloom sewing is a three thread rolled hem because we need a really tiny stitch. What we've done is we've changed our stitch length to a little bit longer stitch length so that it's not a satin stitch so that it won't be quite so heavy. So let's go ahead and see how true we are as to where our needle sews. And there we have it. Okay, we can see that our needle sews right on that line. So you can see here is our line exact, and it? we have incorporated that line right in our stitching. So we can get on to making our baby bib that we're going to make this morning. Um, what you're going to do first is we're going to take this piece of trim and we're going to attach this lace onto this trim. So the most important thing to remember about heirloom sewing is you still have to have that little bit of fabric extending beyond the edge of the lace. Then once we have that little bit of fabric extended, then you take the lace and you place the outside edge of the lace underneath that mark on your foot. So let's see how good we are at this. We're going to place it underneath, right underneath that mark on our foot, and then we're going to sew. And we'll reposition, and then we'll begin sewing again. Reposition, and sew again. Now, what we've done is we have very quickly attached this insertion lace to our piece of trim. So very, very easy. And then we just open it out and there you have that. Now, what we would do is we would place a piece of fabric on each side of that. And we'll go ahead and do that. And then we'll do a serge or tuck. And then we'll have our embellishment for the front of our bib. So we let a little bit of fabric extend beyond the edge of our lace. We place the outside edge of the lace just underneath that mark on our foot. And we sew attaching the lace to the fabric. And now we have the lace now attached to the fabric. So we've actually started creating this piece of fabric. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to do a serger tuck. And those are very easy to do. We take the fabric, we fold it so that the fold is a little wider than the width of our foot. And so we just take now the fabric and we place this edge right here up against the outside edge of the foot. So we're going to actually use the seam that we just made as a guide. So we take that now, we place the seam that we made, that we attach the lace to the fabric, and we place it on the outside edge of the foot. Now you can see what's happening is we're cutting off some fabric, but we also have this beautiful tuck that's being placed into the fabric. So very, very nice way to do that. And then we just continue stitching. Okay. okay. And then to do a second tuck, we would do the, exactly the same thing again. We would fold the fabric. We would use the first tuck that we made. We would place it on the outside edge of our foot and then we would serge, and that's gonna put our tucks a foot's width apart. So here you have 
your piece for your bib. And you see we've just done eyelet and lace and then fabric and fabric on both sides. Then we've put three tucks in this side, three tucks in this side. Then you just put your pieces down. So we have the top embellish layer, the lining, and we put a piece of batting in this to give it a little more stability and then a backing. And then we're gonna cut our pattern out of that created fabric out of all those layers. And then our bib is going to look like this. We just put the lining on the top with the pieces of ribbon sandwiched in between. And then we serge right here. We're gonna serge along each side first. And then we're gonna start at the neck. That way you don't have to turn a corner. That makes it a little easier. So we serge and serge. And then we serge around the neck. Then we take this lining piece and we're going to flip it to the back side so that our neck now looks like this. So that finishes off the two ends and the neck. Then all we have to do is gather our lace and we're going to attach it to the edge, outer edge of the bib. And if you'll notice, we come in just a little ways from the edge because we want to catch all of those layers in place. So once you serge that on, serge your lace on, then what you'll have, once you flip your laces to the outside edge, you'll have a precious baby, baby bib to give away as a gift or to use for your own children. Or grandchildren. Grandchildren, <laughs> that's right. Kathy, that is the cutest project. And I also like that batting in there because when you really use a baby bib, it needs to have a little thickness to it. That's exactly right. For a little right. milk that runs down Yes, there. that's exactly right. <laughs> Kathy, thank you so much for being here today. You're welcome, Martha. And next we have a really wonderful baby bottle craft for you. These adorable baby bottle covers are sure to be the hit of the mother's morning out or else your next grandchild present. Now, I'm going to give you a little tip here. You hang on to these little arms of the animal, the giraffe, and then the baby can hold the bottle and suck it that way. We have both a giraffe, which is adorable, and a Dalmatian dog. Now, these are really easy to do. So let me just, first of all, show you how we make the Dalmatian dog. The bottle cover is very easy to make. It's just a little bit heavy fat, heavy, heavier little white fabric, and it has elastic around the top. And when you make the bottle cover, you don't, you leave this end with no elastic so you can slip it on and then just come in here and whip it by hand so the whole end will be covered. That's the basic bottle. Then to make the little dog, get all the little dog pieces, right sides together, stitch them together. I especially like those little felt ears. It's a lot easier to make it out of felt because then you don't have to put the right sides together and stitch around it. So get all the little dog pieces sewn together, stuff it with polyfill like this, put the little nose and the two little eyes on the doggy. Now, what makes this little dog have a nice stiff bottom to the head is a little piece of plastic canvas that was inserted before it was pulled together and just stitched. That makes it a lot easier to sew onto, makes it a lot easier to sew onto the bottle out here because this will have to be stitched by hand. And then the little head stands up a lot better. Now then for the little paws, just a little circle of, not circle, a little uh, rectangle of fabric, round off the ends, stuff it, and then we took a little bit of embroidery floss and made little paw fingers and that'll be sewn on the side and the little Dalmatian's tail was again another little piece of fabric that was just stitched together. And then when all of that is put together, you stitch it by hand. This is stitched by hand. This is stitched by hand. The little ends actually uh, could be stitched by machine, but I think it'd just be easier to stitch the whole thing by hand. And stitch the little head on the back, and there's the little doggy tail on the back. And then somebody's child or grandchild is going to be very happy to drink a bottle out of this. I also think that the little giraffe is just as cute. And you know what, you could almost do any animal. The giraffe's head is not too different from the dog. Just make the dog head with a long neck if you want a giraffe. Or most of the pattern companies have all kinds of little animal heads. Or you could even make a doll head to go on this. But it's stitched to where little hands can actually just go around there and hold it. And then they're ready to drink their morning snack or their evening bottle or what else out of a bottle. 
As a matter of fact, I think if there are any reluctant bottle drinkers in your family, they won't be reluctant when they have a giraffe. And of course, the other thing is it just might scare them to death, but I don't think that's going to happen. Isn't that cute? Now I have a home decorating project for you. I have the two most precious crafts for you and one of them would be in the kids can sew category and here she is this adorable little handkerchief bear really super easy to make her skirt is simply two handkerchiefs and I'll show you how easy it is to put together all of these little goodies for the top to her little pinafore are simply glued on so this is a great one if you want to have a child or a grandchild to sew first of all you'll need a little purchase bear then two handkerchiefs simply folded over at the top and this one has been the little stitches have been run in by hand so you see that one will be easy to do you can also run your gathering threads on the machine now before we get this little skirt ready to go on the bear we're gonna have to come in of course right sides to right sides or else you could just whip it by hand stitch the under part of this fold together then run the gathers in the skirt which is really easy to do run your little skirt gathers in now then, let's see what else we're going to do to finish this up. We're going to glue three pieces of folded ribbon together, draw off the little pinafore part, then I'll come in here and just trim it away after I have glued it together. Not going to be any sewing on this one, so you see I told you it was easy. Now then, after you have gathered your little skirt up, here is the front part to the pinafore, which can be glued onto the bear. Then these little folded over straps Come in here, right down here, and glue them over the bear's shoulder. And then you're going to gather up the little skirt, wrap it around the bear, glue the flowers in front. And by the way, when we do flowers, I just usually get a little batch of silk flowers like that and simply pull some off, cut it to the back, and glue it down in the front. Gather your little skirt around. And then the waistband is glued before you put the flowers on actually the waistband is glued to the bear all the way around and see it covers up the gathering thread of the little handkerchief and then you'll come around and then you're going to have a little tie you make your waistband long enough to do a bow and then you'll just kind of tie the little gathers in the back of the little skirt now decorate this little bear with a little bouquet flowers in her hair and you see how this really could be a kids can sew project now the next project is a little more difficult so I'm not really going to call it a kids can sew but we'll call it a kids can help project we're going to make Mrs. Humpty Dumpty isn't she adorable in her silk dupioni and her lace and her trim and her netting and the technique I'd like to share with you is how easy it is to gather French lace by the way her face is just simply painted on with fabric paint now how do you get the face on this little Mrs. Humpty Dumpty here is a piece of peach fabric here is the pattern put the peach pattern over peach fabric over the pattern and simply trace through and go ahead and do your eyes and your nose and your mouth and therefore you'll have your face ready now then gathering French lace as we're going to do by the way the face is right here and you'll already have the the mouth and the nose and the eyes on it gathering French lace is really very easy you simply take your pin and go under and you gathering in the loop on the top there the gathers are the threads are built and there's one that has a loop on the top which is the easiest to catch once you catch that lace now this is the way it comes from the factory you did not have to run any gathering threads in when you gather french lace you just simply slip your gathers along be careful but if it breaks don't worry there are four or five more threads in there just go back and find another one and simply don't worry I figure I sew for fun rest and relaxation not worry and if you break something or fix something just simply put it in your stash and start again all right now that's how you gather French lace for Humpty's Mrs. Humpty's front now then we're just going to zigzag Mrs. Humpty's lace necklace around here and by the way you can pin it if you want to and if you want to use a little bit of a temporary spray adhesive that surely does help to hold it down now i'm going to come around i'm getting ready to go over a pin so i think i'm just going to stop sewing right there and let's look a little bit more at what we're going to do all right, Mrs. Humpty has these wonderful little hands and she has a little lace cuff on her hand. So I'm gonna zigzag, kind of jiggle jaggle that lace around and simply zigzag it down. And then I've used a little bit of netting 
from Mrs. Humpty's bib here. So I'm going to use a piece of trim that will reach all the way out. And of course, I'll just come in here and zigzag the trim down. I'll finish sewing the gathered collar around and come in here and zigzag this trim down. And then I'll put Mrs. Humpty's other arm on. And then I have a lining behind this silk dupioni. And after I get all of the trim stitched down, you see she's got her little bib and the gathered lace around the neckline. Let me turn her over to the back so you can see that we did not forget to take her little trim around her neck with a little bit of gathered lace around her neck. And then after all is said and done, we'll put the back on Mrs. Humpty, stitch it all the way around, leave a place, put the polyfiber, the polyfill in there and stitch her up. And isn't that a cute toy, a cute little craft. Mrs. Humpty, and once again, the little bear, then this is one of our great Kids Can Sew projects. All right, now I have another exciting surprise for you. The next two projects, if you have children or grandchildren that love to watch the show, they can make these themselves. The first one we have is an acrylic picture frame with a handprint in it, May 1991, Kyle, 1999, I should have said. Now then, the little hands that are glued on here are buttons. You can see the little buttons on the back. Now, if you would like to use a hot glue gun, children, go ahead and let your mother or your grandmother do this. But if you want the children to really do the whole thing, you can use regular glue. I like the way the little hands are sticking out. Now, let me tell you how you get the little handprint. First of all, take a an acrylic paint that washes out with soap and water, put it in a paper plate, have your little one put their, his or her hand in there, and then come over here and put it on a piece of white paper, cut it out and decorate, and you have a wonderful project. The next project I have is a beach project, a beach friends. This is our granddaughter Emma at the beach this summer. We took it to the photocopy place, had it blown up a little bit, once again used one of these acrylic frames, which are so much fun and very inexpensive trimmed it out, and then here's a wonderful rainy day project at the beach. It's hard to find these little bitty shells on the beach. You might be able to, and that would be a great idea, but if you can't find them, you can go to the beach store and pick them out of their baskets and just buy you some shells. Now, we have a little bottle here, so I have some sand from Gulf Shores, Alabama, and some teeny, teeny, teeny little shells, once again, bought at the souvenir store. I'm going to fill up that little, that little bottle with sand, and here is the way I'm going to, I have Emma's picture in there, and then I glued all of the shells around filled up the little bottle with sand and those little tiny shells and then used a little piece of rope to tie a bow and once again glued all of this down. Two great projects for you to do with your children or your grandchildren. And now won't you come along to my attic with me? This adorable little christening dress I purchased in England. The collar is so sweet, and this is the reason this dress is so unusual, is the fact it does have a collar. The reason I also feel pretty sure this is a christening dress, there's a lot of the number three, one, two, three pieces of lace on the collar. Then the pretty lace is down here with entredeau and gathered lace, but you know the sleeve is really unusual. And the sleeve has three sets of, or sets of three tucks all the way around it. One, two, three tucks, one, two, three. Actually, it has three sets of three tucks. Now, in christening dresses, around the turn of the century, they the number three in a baptismal gown stood for Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And not only are there three tucks, there are three sets of tucks. As you can see, there are three pieces, well, actually, there are three pieces of lace in the cuff, one, two, three, and then there's one around the bottom. Now, let me pick up the skirt on this beautiful dress. The skirt is very simple until you get to the bottom, and then it's very, very elegant and simple also. There are six tucks at the bottom of the skirt, entredeau, and then on the ruffle, one, two, three tucks, and then a beautiful piece of flat lace that is along the bottom. Isn't that an elegant fancy band? Thank you for joining me in my sewing room today. I'm so glad you came, and most importantly, I'd like to invite you back next time. Music